All right? That tells you that's a currency that's not worth very much. Uh, in the middle of last year, you could go down the high street in Ukraine and you could get Hryvna uh, deposits, Hryvna, the local currency deposits, three months site deposits at 47%. Um, that was to stop the sort of uh, the, the collapse of the economy. But you can see uh, Hungary, A, you've got 5.74% on the credit default swap there. So, and if you look at the current account, almost all of these countries have a current account deficit. Uh, how many of you have a degree in economics? Okay, if you have a current account deficit, what has to happen? You put your hand up, sir. What happens if you have, to have, if you have a current account deficit? There should be inflation. Uh, well, you can, yeah, you can, you can print some money to uh, pay off the debt. And what, or, or, or what else can you do? Yep. And how do you get a capital account surplus? Right, so you have to have a net inflow of capital from abroad to buy your assets. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like selling your iPhone to pay your phone bill. Because yeah. uh, you've got a finite number of iPhones, and once you sell them, you don't have any more. So that's another reason why, if you think about the transition process and the crisis hitting at the same time, we've hit an intriguingly unique situation. At the end of transition, there's not much left to privatize, because that's the nature of transition. But you inherit a current account deficit, which means you have to find other ways in which to finance your overconsumption. Or you consume less. All right? And we're not America, so we can't just keep printing dollars to deal with the problem. Yeah? Uh, this comes from a Price Waterhouse Cooper study, which is looking at forecasted GDP falls. Um, darker reds, bigger trouble. Stars mean we went to the IMF looking for help. And if you look at our region, we went looking for help from the IMF in some shape or form. Now, interestingly, Albania appears to have not been severely impacted by this crisis. I, since I know nothing about the Albanian economy, I'm intrigued by that, that reality. Yeah. So what were the principal impacts of the crisis? Well, of course, we saw a dramatic fall off in export trade on the region. We also saw inward FDI from outside dropping because, of course, companies, multinational companies are investing less in the region and therefore we're seeing less of that. We saw severe credit rationing. Um, you know, just if you walk around the city, you, all you see now are advertisements for savings accounts, whereas two years ago they were bending over backwards to sell you uh, an exotic yen financing facility for your uh, <coughs> renovation of your 15th apartment or whatever. Yeah. And as I said, we had our currency crises. You, you, may, you may have heard what was going on in Latvia. Uh, Latvia was particularly impacted by the crisis. Uh, at one point, I think the numbers are getting better, but at one point they were predicting a 15% drop in GDP in 2009, you know, which is severe. I mean, that's that, that, that is a cratering of the economy. We've seen rising unemployment, very, very high consumer debt default. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people who took out those Swiss franc car loans can't pay them back, so the cars get taken back. Last time I was in Bucharest, I was driving from the airport, you know, the, the worst road in Central Eastern Europe from the airport to uh, Central Bucharest, and have a bunch of used car dealerships. And in one used car dealership, there were seven Bugattis lined up next to each other. I, I, I assume some uh, successful Romanian entrepreneurs had to give the, give the keys back um, to the owners. And we've also seen uh, rising government indebtedness as well, uh, partially related, of course, to these IMF packages that have come in. Um, this, this looks at exchange rate devaluation. You can see that Slovakia here actually had an exchange rate appreciation. That was because of joining the euro. Typically, currencies, as they join the euro, see a net appreciation of their currency. That's just a, a phenomenon of that. But you can see, for example, U Ukraine and Hryvna dropped substantially. The, the Zwoty in Poland fell. But you can see across the board, more or less, we saw net devaluations against the euro. Right? Now, again, just think back to economics. Uh, the old-fashioned paradigm that I've now been told about. Um, what, hap what happens to your exports if your currency becomes cheaper uh, in your trading partners? In theory, you should start exporting more, right? Because your export prices go down. Right? This is the so-called J-curve effect. So what we see is, you know, 
for a while they drop and then after a while they start rising. We haven't quite seen that yet, um, but we'll see what happens. This is the growth of domestic credit. You know, I mentioned the, the housing issue in, in Ukraine. Huge amounts of borrowing uh, to finance real estate purchases. At the height of the, um, of the bubble in, in, in downtown Kiev, you could get apartments for more than 12,000 euros per square meter. All right? Which is insane, uh, given the economic fundamentals of, of, of Ukraine. I guess if you're an oligarch, though, I guess you can afford it. Because you've got, you know, you own lots of companies that you acquired spontaneously when the country collapsed. Um, you can see Romania had a problem, but again, across the board, um, domestic credit has increased. Current account deficits. Why does Russia have a current account surplus? Yeah. Oil and gas. Hopefully they won't switch it off again this winter like they did last winter. <laughs> I think the Ukrainians and the Russians have made a deal with each other. Timoshenko and uh, Putin had a meeting. I think they're okay. So with the exception of Russia, again, across the board, growing deficits um, as we end transition, as we uh, hit, get hit by the crisis. So really, when this crisis is over, we just cannot expect a return to the old ways. Now, we can't expect to see these growth rates that we experienced up until the end of transition. Yeah. And also, for, don't forget that every single member state of the European Union that's from Central Eastern Europe that hasn't adopted the euro yet, right, they're committed to further deflationary pressure to get inflation down, to get budget deficits down, to get interest rates down. So the government stimulus possibilities are significantly lower than they were during the transition process.